EFTD. EFTD. Uh, Dank, I have President. Um, the two reports that this committee is going to approve, as well as the amendments, clearly demonstrate that this place is still a regulation factory, more than ever. It clearly shows that this place has little respect for privacy, little understanding of business and commerce, and little understanding for the wealth created by private individuals and companies. This, ladies and gentlemen, will harm European business and jobs. With ever more regulations imposed on business, this committee will strangle business, which in turn will lead to business and entrepreneurs leaving the EU jurisdiction, which will lead to continuous lackluster economic growth that we see in Europe today. Great Britain has a long history of business being damaged by excessive regulations from Brussels, which, ladies and gentlemen, is why the British public voted to leave the EU. Great Britain and the City of London, unshackled from the sclerotic EU economic dinosaur, will demonstrate how light, light business-friendly regulations will lead to increase in business, jobs and wealth for all citizens. You are also, I believe, terrified of that example being made because this place, the EU, is a monster that sucks in more and more money to pay more and more bureaucrats. And if you cut off all objects, all possible ways for people to minimize taxation, which is quite legitimate, why should we give money to governments which invariably squander it in outrageous, ludicrous economic experiments? Then we may well set a, a shockwave through Europe and other people may wish to join us in Brexit, and I hope they do. Perhaps Catalonia, you never know. Thank you very much, uh, David. We have little understanding for any form of unfair tax competition. Und, und da ist Großbritannien. And unfortunately, the UK is uh, very near the top of the list. Also, dass wir gerne weniger... Well, yes, of course, it's human nature to uh, it's human nature to want to pay very little tax, isn't it? Uh, our most sensitive uh, part of our body is our purse, isn't it? To keep the money you earn where you're hard labour, sir. And if yeah. you're not allowed to do it, you, it is not fair to the citizen. Hard labour should be rewarded, not a bureaucracy which just shuffles paper. And I'm afraid that's what happens in Europe and is why Britain okay. will set an example to the world and economic efficiency and how it should be done, and to protect the, the civil rights of the citizen to keep their hard-earned money that they have worked to, to gain and not give it away to a bunch of bureaucrats okay. who want to basically suck our blood. Well, we'll have to see what, uh, what becomes of Brexit. And then finally, I think it's very important for there to be harmonization in Europe regarding the uh, amount of money you can operate with in, in cash. So there was this idea of the French ban, you know, you cannot pay more than a thousand euros uh, in cash. That was one idea that I think is a good idea. And that hasn't been covered in the text either. But anyway, Chairman, I wanted to thank you for set, allowing me to set out these ideas. Uh, we'll, we'll try to, you know, get them through in the vote anyway with some of our amendments. Thank you. Okay. Uh, vielen Dank. Thank you very much. Now, the last point is not uh, part of our competence. We have various different proposals regarding use of cash. There are different traditions in Europe, and I think that... This needs to be t treated separately in an ordinary legislative procedure. I'm very skeptical about limiting cash use. However, that's not one of the most important points in the report. So if there are no further requests for the floor, would anyone like to speak? Mr. Coburn, please, no declarations of principle. Just following on from what the gentleman was saying about limiting people's ability to use cash, May I say that this shows a gross misunderstanding or a gross lack of understanding of any type of business. 
I don't understand how someone can say such a thing. They obviously have no understanding of business, and, they, and such a remark is ridiculous. Naja, das gibt's auch. Yes, well, there are regions and countries where this happens that are under UK governance. Well, it's cultural, isn't it? If you start talking about Turkey, then I'm sure you'll have absolutely no understanding for them. Now, uh, if you're a centralized power, then maybe you can impose it. Well, I don't think we need to further discuss it. Let me just say one thing to you now, or allow you to speak. I just wanted to say to my colleague that if we had a map of Europe and if we were able to look at the different bans that have been introduced in certain member states that already exist regarding limits on paying for transactions with cash, then you might see that what I'm saying is not a nonsense, in fact. There are about 12 countries in the European Union that already have certain limits set. France is one of them. And as far as I'm aware, this actually works on the market. They're not stupid in France. So what I'm saying, Chairman, is that the idea in this report is to examine different options for the future. And I think that in the European Union, we should have a form of harmonization to set a maximum limit for people to operate with cash transactions. But let me say again, this is already working in more than 12 countries in the EU. Well, maybe the facts are a little bit different. Criminals don't need cash anymore. They set up a bank or company in order to manage their kind of organized crime. So abolition of the 500 banknote by the ECB, that's no longer going to be produced. So I think it was a very sensitive measure. However, a general restriction of cash will not meet with a majority in Europe. Now, I'd like to close the debate if no one else wishes to take the floor, and I'd like to give the floor to the rapporteurs.